please, sir. If you've got a moment to spare, there are the frames you asked for. Thank you, Mr. Harper. And you better hurry up and chew them before old Peacock gets back from his coffee break. What do you want these for? Well, I get these terrible headaches. I told you you shouldn't do that needlepoint. I don't do needlepoint. <laughs> Not now that I'm doing the lace mats. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Is that me? Blimey, your eyes are bad. <laughs> I mean, are they in harmony with my personality? Well, they would be if you bought an electric organ to go with them. <laughs> Here, try these. Oh, no. <laughs> People think I can only afford half of them. <laughs> ah, now, these are good. Oh, yes. Oh, that... Oh, these are definitely me. Mm -hmm. What do you think? <laughs> well, they'll be handy for looking through letterboxes. <laughs> Do you know, I haven't done that since I went carol singing as a little lad. Hey, did you see Mummy kissing Santa Claus? <laughs> <laughs> as a matter of fact, I think she was trying to push him back up the chimney. Ah, <laughs> oh, now, these definitely, yes. Oh, yes, my mind is made up, firm as concrete. No matter what anybody says, I will... <laughs> Mr Humphreys, take off those ridiculous glasses. Yes, Captain Peter. <laughs> Harmon, get off the floor. Uh, take this thing with you. Yeah, to hear this to a pay, you master. That is the camisole, and these are the matching pantaloons. Are you sure this is the trendy thing the girls are wearing today? <laughs> no, that's convinced me. <laughs> Cheeky monkey. Where was I? Oh, you're telling me about this Greek fella you're keen on, Mixomatosis. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Metaxis. Anyway, where did you meet him? Well, me and Mrs. Axelby was in this Greek restaurant. On your own? Well, you don't always want to go with men, do you? Anyway, he was sitting alone in a corner and he was staring. You know how they do. Well, after a while, he sent a note over saying he'd like to give us both an ouzo. In front of everyone? <laughs> It's a drink. <laughs> anyway, as Mrs. Axelby said, what have we got to lose? Well, it turns out that he's very well known there because of his bazooki. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Well, it's a sort of funny-shaped Greek banjo. <laughs> and when he played, never on Sunday, we all threw plates. Was he that awful? <laughs> <laughs> no. You do that. It's a Greek custom. Oh, well, you seem to know an awful lot about it. Well, it may be that I, I shall need to. Can you keep a secret? Oh, cross me heart. I've been out with him every night for a month. And last night, he popped the question. Do you mean he's asked you to marry him? It's a secret! <laughs> Did I hear something, Mrs Slogan? This Greek fella's asked her to marry him. It was supposed to be a secret. Mr. Thames, Mr. Humphreys, Mr. Lucas, come over here at once. <laughs> I've got some startling news for you. Mrs. Slocum is going to get married. Has she been advertising again? <laughs> he got her with his bazooka. Well, she's a big enough target. <laughs> bazooka, Miss Brock. Oh, yeah, he's a Greek banjo player. <laughs> well done, dear. Mm. As my mother always says, there's always someone for everyone. <laughs> well, almost everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Slocum, I've always had a great affection for you. Does this mean that we're going to lose you? Oh, no, I've no plans to leave. Oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the happy event? Hang about, she hasn't even got married yet. Captain Peacock... You are employed to keep order in this department, not to encourage gossiping round the counters. Mrs. Slocum's going to get married. Oh, allow me to be the first to congratulate you. Actually, you're the last. <laughs> ah, well, be that as it may, we are here to serve customers, so perhaps you'll all go back to your counters. In the meantime, may I wish you every happiness on behalf of Grace Brothers and take this opportunity to remind you that your trousseau, your wedding dress, furnishings for your future home are all obtainable in Grace Brothers at the usual staff discount, of course. <laughs> oh, this also applies to bathroom fittings, carpets, hardware, and in the fullness of time, 
prams and lay at. <laughs> oh, sure <laughs> When Mrs. Slocum told us the news yesterday, you could have knocked me down with a feather. She didn't look too happy this morning. She's worried about the cost of the wedding. It's the bride's family what pays, and she's the only one what's left. Mm, catering can cost a fortune these days. Well, I know. She had, she started out getting a quote for champagne and smoked salmon, and now she's working on meat paste and brown ale. <laughs> well, if she hasn't any next of kin, who's going to give it away? Well, perhaps her friend Mrs. Axelby will put on a morning suit and top hat. <laughs> Very good idea. She's got the moustache already. <laughs> you are horrible. She's asked me to be her bridesmaid. Uh, she'll probably ask Mr. Humphreys to be a page. <laughs> there was a page boy one. Hmm? I had a page boy bob, a full Fauntleroy collar, uh, black velvet trousers, knee breeches, silk stockings, patent leather shoes with silver buckles, <laughs> oh, and white gloves. I bet you look sweet. How old were you? Thirty-one. <laughs> I was in the basement of Derry and Tom's. We did an amateur production of Twelfth Night. I was the lovely Viola. Couldn't they find a girl? Well, not in tools and do-it-yourself. <laughs> I didn't know you were in do-it-yourself. Well, it's not something you like to talk about, is it? <laughs> ah, we, uh, we hear you're having problems with the wedding arrangements. Everything costs a much. Uh, perhaps we could persuade young Mr. Grace to give you a special price for your reception. Oh, I wouldn't want to ask him. Well, there's the senior man on the floor. Perhaps I could put a word in. Uh, what date had you in mind for the wedding? Well, as soon as possible. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> I know to what you are inferring, Mr. Lucas. And Mr. Metaxas isn't that kind of man at all. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> The situation is, Mr. Grace, that Mrs. Slocum is taking a husband. Uh, whose husband? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, sir. She's getting married to a Greek. She's done me the honour of uh, asking me to give her away, so I've undertaken the arrangements. Naturally, she wants the usual reception before the honeymoon, and we wondered if we could persuade you to let her have it in the boardroom. Yeah. Well, not much of a place for the honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. I suppose we could put a mattress on the table. <laughs> could she have the boardroom for the reception? Yes, it's to be on the 30th, sir. Oh, it's booked that day, sir. Um, you're giving a tea party for distressed nightclub hostesses. That's right. <laughs> I do quite a lot of charitable work, you know. Why don't you use the department? Would you allow that, sir? Of course, as long as we do the catering. Give me the car. Here we are. Yes, well, you could have uh, smoked salmon, rest of chicken and asparagus tips, petit four with champagne. Six quid a knob. <laughs> I'm afraid we can't run to that, sir. All right, uh, we'll do uh, the packing department uh, uh, special for Japanese tin champagne and uh, a few dead things in jelly. They'll never know the difference. <laughs> well, is there anything else? I don't think so, sir. All right, well, go away. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Now, uh, where were we before you let him in? Well, I was betting my dress against your shirt and trousers, and then you was just going to see me. <laughs> oh, 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 I say. Uh, uh, Did you shout, sir? Oh, I gasped. I've got a flash. Oh, I've got a flash. Come on, come on. Hello, Mother. I'm going to be late. I've got to alter a dress. No, not for me, dear, for a colleague. <laughs> a female colleague. Yeah. We'll put mine in the oven. Well, if it's a salad, what's all the fuss about? <laughs> no, I'm going. Hmm? No, don't worry. No, I won't take the shortcut across the park. No. Anyway, they've caught that man. <laughs> right, come along, dear. I haven't got all night. <laughs> I knew she'd choose the Princess Grace model. What do you think? Well, that train will have to go for a start. <laughs> oh, on second thought, you could use it as a top sheet on the bridal bed. <laughs> Turn round. <laughs> oh, um, yes, it's going to need letting out just a bit there. What did you choose this one for? 
It was reduced by 50%. <laughs> well, if we could reduce you by 50%, we'd be in business. Well, hang on to the counter. Miss Brahms, take her shoulders. That's it, right. Now, um... <laughs> now, take a deep breath in. And second thoughts, take a deep breath out. That's it. That's it. I... I got it. <laughs> You've got a bit of a problem here. <laughs> that with Kew Garden. <laughs> oh, answer that, Miss Brahms. What are we going to do? Well, if it comes to the push, I could run you something up in barbed wire. <laughs> Protects the property, but doesn't obscure the view. Mrs Slocum, it's Ivy. She's got your call to the Greek restaurant. Oh! Oh, <laughs> Better pin that up before you break your leg. Why couldn't you choose a short one? I couldn't. We're getting married Greek Orthodox. Oh, is that you, Mr Tamayades? Could I have a word with Mr. Metaxas, please? It's his fiancée, Mrs. Slocum. Oh, oh, well, it's all right, I'll wait. He's just finishing his turn. He's ever so popular. <laughs> <laughs> Who's in the audience? The National Front. <laughs> what was that, Mr. Tamades? Oh, I see. Oh, he's having to take an encore. Well, look, will you just tell him that I'll be a little bit late, but I've got some wonderful, exciting news. What's the wonderful, exciting news? He's going to have a topless wedding. <laughs> no. No, you see, I wrote to this uncle of mine in America and I invited him to the wedding. Well, you know how you do. I mean, he's very well off and I thought he might give us something rather nice. Well, this morning, I got this letter from him and he's coming to the wedding. And do you know what he's giving us? No. House. No. <laughs> he is. And he's coming all that way. Well, it's all because I'm marrying a Greek. You see, it seems that the partisan saved his father-in-law's life during the war, and then he left him his business. So, of course, he's very grateful. Oh, fancy. It's like a Hollywood story. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I think I've seen the film. Joan Crawford played my part. <laughs> Who played my part? Walter Brennan. <laughs> Anyway, we're going to have to do it properly, you know. We're going to have to have a band and dancing and taramasalata. That's going to be expensive. Oh, well, I dare say Mr Metaxas will chip in. I mean, he's not mean. He's taking me to Greece for our honeymoon. He's already put a down payment on a package deal. I'm going to meet his family. Yeah, hang on. See, this is his family at his sister's wedding. That's him with his bazooka. <laughs> oh, who are them ones dancing around in them skirts? Oh, they're his brothers. <laughs> How much is this package? <laughs> oh, here you are. Two cases of bubbly from the wine and spirit department. That'll be enough. Well, uh, we've no need to stint ourselves. Mrs Slocum's uncle is footing the bill, so bring up another dozen. <coughs> And that's why I'm footing up my top hat, tying up my white tie, brushing up my tails. How do we look? A credit to the department. <laughs> I can't say the same for Mr. Thames. Who took these dead measurements? Let's see what you can do, Mr. Humphreys. Come on, come on. Car coming in half an hour to take us to the church. Oh, young Mr. Grace has very kindly let us have his rolls to take uh, the bride, yourself, and Miss Brahms. Oh, how very generous of him, sir. Yes, it is. He's only charging us twelve pounds. <laughs> has anyone got a safety pin? She's having trouble with her corsage. Miss Brahms, may I say how charming you look? Oh, thank you, Captain Peacock. Well, you should see Mrs. Slocum. It's a beautiful frock. It makes her look about sixteen. A remarkable garment indeed. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. The store is closed. Yes, yes, I know this. Uh, I am Mr. Tomiades. Uh, I am looking for the Captain Peacock. I am Captain Peacock. Uh, 
I don't know how I am telling you this. It is Mr. Metaxis. He is in this aeroplane. What's he doing in an aeroplane? He's only coming from Wimbledon. Hasn't that an accident, has he? Uh, no, no. Uh, poor Mr. Metaxis. He is my friend. He so wanted that he should marry the beautiful Mrs. Slocum. Well, in about half an hour, he will. Uh, no. No, we Greeks, we are the funny people. <laughs> you know, we are very close together. There is this member of his family who here he is to be married and say, no, 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 he must go home. So he go home. Well, uh, who is this member of his family? His wife. <laughs> <laughs> he is a good man. He apologize and, and say that he want to give Mrs. Slocum the most precious thing that he have, his bazooki. <laughs> Do not feel bad about him. It was the Uzo that proposed. Now the bottle is empty. <laughs> well, it's all right, Miss Browns. I fixed it. Now, shut your eyes, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you can open them now. How do I look? Oh, you look beautiful. <laughs> Oh, don't worry, Miss Brahms. Your day will come. <laughs> She's such a sensitive girl. Oh, oh, you do all look nice. It's ever so kind of you to dress up so smart for me. Do you know, I've never seen you look nicer, Mr. Tebbs. Well, I wanted to look my best. <laughs> oh, and Captain Peacock. Hello, what's that doing here? Mr. Tomides delivered it. Oh, perhaps it's an old Greek custom. Oh, isn't it a beautiful one? The priceless, you know. Perhaps I'm supposed to carry it up the aisle. We're not going to be late for the church, are we, Mr. Humphreys? You've got all the time in the world! <laughs> into the fitting room, Betty. I, uh, I have one or two things to explain to you. <laughs> It'll finish her. I'd marry her myself, but I think she's got enough trouble. <laughs> you know, I wonder how she's going to take it. Hers was such a frail, tender love. The Diggle Basket! <laughs> That's it. Mrs. Slocum's uncle is coming straight here instead of to the church. Didn't he think it was funny? Well, I told him that we'd explain everything when he got here. At least it gives us time to think. Perhaps if we give him a good party and fill him full of champagne, he'll pay for the reception anyway. How is she? Well, she stopped throwing the furniture about. Now she's just crying. Oh, that poor woman. Not only has she lost her husband, she's lost a house to put him in. <laughs> you mean her uncle won't give her the house now? It was only because she was going to marry a Greek she was getting it in the first place. Hey, listen, couldn't we get that Greek vicar over here and pretend she was getting married in the store? Yeah, like them Hollywood weddings. Even assuming we could persuade a, a Greek Orthodox priest to be a party to such a blasphemy, where are we going to find a substitute Greek bridegroom and best man? Well, we've got a Greek band coming. Perhaps a couple of them will stand in for us. It's worth a try. It's the only way she'll get that house. Oh, no, I really can't go along with this. No? Well, let me put it another way, Mr. Rumble. Who signed the chit ordering the food, the band and the cars in the expectation that Mrs. Slocum's uncle was going to pay for it? Well, I did. Yes, yeah, so who's going to have to pay for it if there is no Greek wedding? <laughs> mm, yes. <laughs> yes, I take your point. Well, this calls for executive action. Uh, Miss Brown, go and tell Mrs. Slocum what I've decided to do. Mr. Humphreys, Mr. Lucas, waylay the band, see if you can get us a best man and a bridegroom. Hmm? Well, even assuming they're successful, where do we get a Greek vicar? Well, the art of leadership is in delegation. Mr. Tebbs, I delegate you. To find a Greek vicar? <laughs> no, to be one. <laughs> I have no cognizance of the tone. Yeah. But I don't suppose her American uncle has either, so no one's going to be any the wiser. But this bill's for nearly £150. But well, come on, what are you doing standing there? Oh, hanging come on. Oh, Ah. Uh, 
Mrs. Slocum's guests are here, and I take the liberty of putting them in the fruit juice bar. Oh, and I've got your records. I've got, here comes the bride, followed by your genuine Greek wedding chant. Well, uh, what about the uh, groom's guests? Uh, a couple of Greeks did turn up, but I sussed them out by the ouzo on their breath. <laughs> and I told them the venue had been changed to a Chinese restaurant in Palmer's Green. <laughs> Good thinking. I'm still not at all sure about Mr. Tebbs' ability to disguise himself as a Greek Orthodox priest. Ah, oh, you don't want to worry. Sorry, he's gone down at Fabrics now, getting kitted out with some very regal-looking curtain material. And he'll be all right as long as he don't touch the hat. The hat? The one I knocked off the chef. I've gone over it with some black enamel, you see, and if he keeps his fingers off it till the third course of a bide with me, we're home and dry. <laughs> going to work. She's in a right state. Oh, poor dear lady. She's had more than anyone can take. Yeah, she's had three large brandies in all. <laughs> but is she going to go through with it? Oh, yes. She'll go through with anything rather than let her friends know she's been stood up. <laughs> Mimey, there she goes again. <laughs> I hope this isn't going to take long. I'm all safety pins. <laughs> Blimey, Archbishop Alitosis. <laughs> I don't think that'll convince anyone. Don't be so cynical, Captain Peacock. I believe in throwing myself into a role. Well, uh, I think it's a splendid effort, Mr. Tebbs. Thank you. Is that my altar? Are you over here, Your yes. Eminence. I, uh, I picked this up in the second-hand book department. It's about the right size for a Greek Bible. It's the British Boys' Annual. <laughs> well, it's either that or the Guinness Book of Records. <laughs> if you pull this off, you'll be in the Guinness Book of Records. <laughs> Look out, young Mr Grace. Rumble, Rumble, uh, is it true that you cancelled my car? Yes, sir. Uh, you'll have to pay for it, you know. <laughs> Who's that? Oh, uh, this here, Mr. Grace, sir, is his right royal eminence, the Archbishop Alitosis, who has flown direct from Athens to perform the ceremony right here in the store. Uh, pleased to meet you. Ego, pego, ali pali, mospros. <laughs> business has been rotten in this store, too. <laughs> what on earth have you got that on for? Well, I'm the best man, aren't I? The Greek band wouldn't play ball, but I gave them ten quid and they said they'd play the music and keep their mouths shut. They lent me this out of their costume basket. Oh, by the way, the guests downstairs are fed up drinking orange juice and fruit juice. They're coming up now. Well, where's Mr Humphreys? He's standing in front of a mirror trying to make himself look like a Greek husband. And let's face it, he's playing against type. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the ceremony. I am Mr Armand the Usher. Brides, guests on the lift. Rooms on the right, please. Take your position, sir. Right the way through there, madam, if you'd like to go across. Hey the there, I'm Wendell P. Clark. Oh. <laughs> yes, well, I, I'm Rumbold, Howdy. manager of this department. Yes. Uh, this is Captain Peacock, our Howdy. floor walker. <laughs> you must be Mrs. Slocum's uncle. Yes, sir, and I understand from the guests that you're going to hold the, the wedding ceremony right here. That's a great idea. Oh, pleased to see you, Your Eminence. Euripides, Aristotle, Polydorus, <laughs> Polypolemus. I was in Greece during the war and I understand some of your customs. Benedictine Calvados. <laughs> Gee, I gotta make a donation to their church. That guy's held up with safety pins. <laughs> uh, you, sir, I presume, are the groom. Me, Mr. Lucopolis. Me, best of manner. Oh, pleased to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you, too. Now, where is my little niece, Betty? I haven't seen her since she was so high, said a pretty little girl. You'll probably notice quite a change. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Uh, that is the groom. <laughs> you may remember the, uh, the uniform of the Greek National Guard. Some of the finest fighting soldiers in the whole wide world. They've never been known to turn their backs on the enemy. Sound <laughs> <Some> tactics. <laughs> Me, Mr. Metaxas. I just met your best man, uh, uh, Mr. We... Lupopolis. Uh, no, Lupopolis. We oh. come from Samey Village. Oh, where is that? Hoftos. <laughs> Captain Peacock, perhaps you'd like to go and fetch the bride. Certainly, sir. Mrs. Slocum. Mrs. Slocum, are you free? 
<laughs> Mr. Harmon, play the music. Uh, yes, sir. The bridal couple, they lead the guests in the bridal dance. Yes, that's right. Uh, clear the floor, ladies and gentlemen. Right. 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 Now then, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Metaxas, bridal dance, you please. <laughs> <laughs> 